Well, hello there. We want to welcome you to Nightline again. And uh, what a refreshing day uh, that it has been. Uh, I, I've been around some real strong people in the Lord, real warriors in prayer. And boy, it's just uh, been a terrific day. Then I went out in the field, done a little bit of witness today, trying to introduce people to Jesus, that they can uh, get their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So it's been a full day for me, and I've been excited about it. And uh, I got a little bit of rest before I came this way, but the Lord sustains us in all these ways. Many of you know that. You know, you're going through things. You're facing situations and circumstances in life that sometimes seem to just pile in on you, you know, and you feel like you're suffocating for so many things that are going on. But tonight, uh, Dr. Billy, he's got some answers for you. He's going to be here to talk to you about real life and how you can really be free, how the shackles can break loose. And he, he's going to speak hope into your life. And so I, I'm just uh, excited about that. It's just, it's just been, like I say, a, a tremendous day. And, I, of course, I've been meeting with some of the uh, Nicaraguan folks, uh, Guillermo Morales, his wife, Gabby, was here. Oh, man, alive. You talk about somebody that just loves the Lord. And uh, they're just doing a mighty work over there, chosen children and all are. And so I, I, was, I was just really blessed to just be able to sit in there and listen to these guys talk about upcoming things. And it's, it takes a lot of faith. And as I'm, I'm just telling you it does because it's so mammoth what is taking place. But our God is able. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who supplies the things that we need. We just got to trust Him and lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him. And He's promised to direct our path. Amen? He wants to direct our path. It's the good path. It's, it's, it's a path that is just it's so good. It's so good you, can't, you just probably can't stand it hardly. It's so good. And you can't wait to tell somebody else about it. And all through the day, you're going to get an opportunity to, to really know the King. Make sure that Jesus he is, really controls your life. Make sure that your name is in the book. Make sure that you're hiding a word in your heart that you may not sin against God. Make sure that that word comes alive in you. Amen? I mean, it's just the word is so full of life. We need not to neglect it. We need to stay focused on it with eyes of fire to learn all we can about Jesus who gave his life for us. And so it's just, it's just been tremendous. You stay with us. There's a lot to come. Mark Dubell family, who is on the Lord's side and uh, the snakes in trouble.
wandered through the garden and right up to Sister Eve. Then brother Adam followed that old serpent he deceived. But when he brought the curse, Father God, he brought the cross. All oh, the snakes, the snakes in trouble. The snakes in trouble, oh yeah. The snakes in trouble, oh yeah. So just in case you're wondering how this world is gonna end, just remember the snakes in trouble. Now down throughout the ages, he sure tried to turn our heads and make us think our Christ would find his place among the dead. But what a grand surprise when Jesus rose alive instead. Oh, the snakes, the snakes in trouble. The snakes in trouble. Oh, yeah. The snakes in trouble. Oh, yeah. So just in case you're wondering how this world is gonna end, just remember the snakes in trouble. This season seems to tell us time is coming to an end. The serpent's desperate struggle, a message seems to send. He's throwing final blows, but with Jesus we will win. Oh yes, the snakes, the snakes in trouble. The snakes in trouble, oh yeah. The snakes in trouble, oh yeah. So just in case you're wondering how this world is gonna end, just remember the snakes in trouble. So just in case you're wondering how this world is gonna end, just remember the snakes in trouble. Well, again, we thank you so much. We uh, praise God for the music. It always plows our hearts to get ready uh, for the coming of the Word and such. But tonight we have uh, Dr. Billy Max Ferg. He's here, and uh, yeah, he's uh, written seven books, and we've got his latest, and you'll learn about it during the program and all. But it's uh, keenly aware of the miracles uh, uh, that are happening. They're happening all around us, actually. And uh, we need to tap into some of these things. And uh, so, let's. I, I, no further ado, let's get let's get Billy going. Billy, it's great to have you here, sir. Thank you. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. It's a real honor, and uh, I liked your uh, opening uh, yeah. dialogue. That was great. Oh, great thank time. you, sir. Yep. The uh, I, you know, uh, being as uh, my age as I am now, and been in all the churches I've been in, all the, well, some ac across the seas and a lot in this country. Uh, skepticism a lot of times from people that um, when you think about I mean these are church folks you know we're talking about and uh, about uh, the, the question miracles you know the miracles I mean the miracles still happen and uh, what's what's been your experience in that arena because you've been a lot of places too mm -hmm. yes uh, miracles happen if you believe in miracles healings happen if you believe in in healings, mm. and um, I've I've seen God do so many wonderful things. I was just a, a young Christian, um, maybe just three four months in the Lord, and uh, prayed for my son's uh, ears, and uh, um, he had terrible infections and pain, and uh, the doctors thought he had about a thirty percent hearing loss, and so oh. I, I prayed for them one night, and um, he was healed, and uh, the doctor confirmed it a couple months later when. He went for a checkup. One of, one of the real amazing yeah. testimonies I saw a few years back was in Puerto Rico. I was in San Juan. The Lord had sent me there. And it's an interesting story. I won't go into how I got there, but it was just kind of neat how God sent me there. And I just put it in my heart to go to a, uh, an orphanage. And so I asked the mm. pastor to send me to an orphanage. And I went there, and they had about 20 children. And there was a little baby by the name of Saul. And he had... Um, uh, AIDS. Uh, he was HIV positive. His mother was uh, a drug um, uh, addict and yeah. she was dying someplace in a hospital. And he was burning up with a fever, laying in his little crib. He was 18 months old. And the Lord said, if you lay hands on him and pray for him, Ooh. I'll heal him. Mm. And though, you know, we, so we didn't know a lot about AIDS, but I, I reached over and laid hands on him. And I just said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke 
AIDS. I commanded to go from this baby and for Saul to be healed. I stepped out for a few minutes. I had another young man with me uh, traveling. Um, about 20 minutes later, we played with the kids, you know, and then 20 minutes later, I just said, let's go back and check on that baby. Mm -hmm. We went in there and he was standing up in his crib and he, his fever had broken and his whole bed was soaking, soaking wet. wet. And the first thing was um, the lady that ran the orphanage ran over, looked in his mouth and he'd had white pussy sores. He was probably within a couple weeks of, of, of dying. Mm. And anyway, his, all the sores were gone out of his mouth. And the milkman came in and he saw little Saul and he said, Saul's been healed. And another lady came in and she said, Saul's been healed. So um, we came back to the States. And that young man that was with me, he was kind of a skeptic. Yeah. And he um, went on another mission trip with another organization and he found that orphanage and he went there and he asked about the baby. Is that right? And they said, oh yes, we remember you and your white bearded friend. <laughs> and uh, uh, little <laughs> Saul was healed. We took him to the doctor and he got a clean bill of health. He was adopted by a family who had a seven-year-old boy who was dying of leukemia. Mm. And when uh, they brought little Saul home, um, the boy was instantly healed. Cool. Yeah. And the father was blind in one eye, and within uh, 30 days, he received his sight back in that eye. Mm. They, they changed his name to Brian, and I always think there's going to be a great healing evangelist coming out of Puerto Rico by yeah. the name of Brian. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's in one of the yeah, accounts in the book. book. Uh, that, that they can read, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so we had the confirmation that God healed, God will heal AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. don't have to suffer with anything. So... Uh, where, where, uh, where were you when you met the Lord? How? Oh, I was just a just a, an old sinner. I was just a, a wreck. My life was a, was a mess, yeah. and um, I was um, I suppose he called me an alcoholic. I um, I drank yeah. too much, <clears throat> and uh, kind of came to the end of myself. Um, you know, that's a good place to come to, isn't it? Though? The end of yourself. You know, because mm. I ran out of options. Yeah, I had I had problems. We'd had a business that we'd. Um, had sold and it didn't go well and I was in debt and it was a very tough time. And um, uh, I turned to the Lord and uh, I, I can remember running out of my house on a Saturday morning. I just wanted to run away from me. I don't know if you ever had problems like that. You just wanted to lose you. Hmm. And, um, you know, because I knew I was the problem. And I, I ran as far as I could ran, or run, you know, down the street and probably half a mile. I was really out of shape. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, if um, Jesus is who people say he is, then I'd li I want to know him. Wow. And a great peace came over me. And the Lord began to lead me into uh, uh, Bible studies and Christian people. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon led me into a, a church on a Sunday morning. My wife invited me to go there. She'd gotten saved about six months before me yeah. and um, gave my heart to the Lord. And then uh, he set me free from, from yeah. alcohol after that. And uh, I was out jogging one morning before yeah. work. And I'm running down the street because, you know, I know I've got a problem and I want to keep myself healthy. And I started to shout from the top of my, my lungs, Leviticus uh, 10, 8, 9, and 10. And, and I mean, uh, involuntarily. And so I stopped. I said, well, that's weird. And so I started jogging again. Leviticus 10, 8, 9, and 10. Well, that kind of kind of surprised me. And I, I, I said, I'm going home. And so I turned around, and it happened a third time. Mm. And so I didn't know what Leviticus was, but I thought, maybe it's in the Bible. My wife had bought me a Bible. I had never opened it. And uh, I, I went home and uh, found Leviticus. And it was um, God speaking to Aaron. And he says, uh, you shall not drink wine or intoxicating drink when you go into the temple, you or your sons, lest you die. Mm. Now, that's kind of a direct word, not to drink. Mm. And uh, so I kind of challenged God a little bit. And um, it wasn't long after that that, that he dealt so with me heard? some more. And um, yeah. he, he finally delivered me wow. one night at my kitchen counter making a drink. That's very powerful. And I've uh, been, been, been sober for... Gosh, a long time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> 30, that's way 30, back under the blood. Thirty-eight years or something yeah. like that. Yeah, haven't had a drop. Got tempted a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Um, had the devil tempt me. I was driving my car one day, having a kind of a, a pity party. I was going through something, and all of a sudden, a, a can of um, Pabst Blue Ribbon beer appeared on my dashboard. You know, just an open vision. And I said, "Well, devil, you're dumb. I never did drink Pabst." 
<laughs> so. Yeah, always temptation. Always trying to sure. set a trap yep. uh, for you. It doesn't matter what age you are. Right. You'll set the trap no matter what. Yep. And uh, so the we're we're to uh, stay on guard, guarding our eyes. Amen. You know, guarding what we hear, so that that Be careful inner where man, you go. Yeah, yes. always. I mean, so that that uh, we can actually slim down those those areas of temptation. But the main thing is just being totally immersed in the Spirit of God, doing That's the right. leading, guiding, and directing, no matter what. That's, that is very powerful. So interesting. And uh, now, did you get saved at home? Um, you know, I, I kind of got saved on that street that day when I cried out to God. You okay. know, I mean, that was yeah, kind of the beginning. Yeah, that was a kickoff, man. Where yeah. it really, it hit you. But I, I really um, did it in church. Uh, in church. Entered an altar call. I went oh. to church. I went four weeks. So the first time I went, um, the, the, the pastor was preaching right out of, out of my life. Like he was preaching what a, a chapter out of my life. And I looked at my wife and I said, she must have called him and told him I was coming to church. <laughs> well, that was terrible. And so um, we left. And uh, all week long, I thought about what that guy, oh, he was a good preacher. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the next, uh, next Saturday, I said, I'll, I'll smart her. I won't tell her I'm going to church until Sunday morning. She won't oh. have time to call him. Oh. And so, uh, uh -oh. so the next Sunday morning, you know, I said, well, let's go to church. And we'll go back to that same one. And, you know, he preached another chapter out of my life. Mm. And he looked at me the whole time. Isn't that something? Yeah. I and mean, I was under such conviction. Yeah. This happened four Sundays in a row. Finally, I couldn't take it. They gave an altar call. And uh, I went to the altar and got saved. Uh, yeah, something like you got saved to the bone. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, got a radically saved. So I went to work in the morning. I got saved on Sunday, went to work yep. Monday morning. And I worked um, for a, a, a trucking company, a, a delivery type stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was nine men in the lunchroom waiting to punch in, you know, to start the day. And, and uh, I, I said to them, hey, 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 you guys, guess what happened to me yesterday? And, and they said, what happened to you? I got born again. You guys all born again? I just figured maybe they were and they hadn't told me. Yeah. And the one guy looked at me and he said, Ferg, you're an idiot. <laughs> And they all walked out. So I stood there by myself and I thought, well, I'll find somebody else to tell. Yeah. And so I've spent the last almost 40 years now telling people about Jesus. Just telling them. Didn't discourage me a bit. Yeah. In fact, it encouraged me. Some walk away. It was a good thing, yes. Some step up. That's right. <laughs> it makes a, it's a big <coughs> thing that goes on. Isn't it amazing when that happens to you? It's like, you know, when something happens so good and it tastes so good, you, you want to share it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's what happened to me. I, mean, I, I thought, well, everybody's going to want this. Amen. And then Why you, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> good gracious. You ought to just open your mouth and watch them come run, running. Mm -hmm. And, boy, I found out that wasn't going to be quite the way at all. That wasn't, yeah. Uh, some of them just look at you like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. You know, what in the world? You, ask, uh, you know, in other words, as long as you'll remain religious, mm -hmm. you'll be religious now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, do your thing and go to church. Be a good, be good boy. Don't talk about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't mention Except for Christmas. That, don't have that name there. Now, let's leave out. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. really the truth. Yeah. It offends mm -hmm. because uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it shows a sin. It, it just will yeah. mirror real quick mm -hmm. uh, to us, you know. And that's uh, a lot of people cannot stand that. So... Uh, it's like being in church sometimes. You know, you ask a person like you know, like you you probably ask different people. Do you believe in healing? Maybe a teacher, maybe a pastor, maybe something like that ever happened to you? Well, you'd ask them, do they believe? What what, mm -hmm. what response do they give? Yeah, well, like for an altar call, you know, and I'd um, ask them if um, they only believe Jesus could heal them. A lot of times, it's um, well, I hope so. Okay. See, and just hoping isn't gonna isn't gonna get you healed. Mm -hmm. I had a, there's an account in here, and it's, um, I think it's called uh, the uh, 38 Slug. And I, w I was preaching on the woman with the issue of blood mm -hmm. one Sunday, it's just a couple of years ago. And uh, <clears throat> at the end, I gave an altar call, and this man came up, and I just invited him. I'd met him, and I'd witnessed to him, and invited him to church, and I didn't know anything about him. And so he came to church that Sunday, and he comes up, and uh, yeah, I always prayed for the sick every, every Sunday. And he lifts up his shirt and he's got a, a gauze on his, on his belly, right, right kind of underneath his uh, belly button there, mm -hmm. and some tape across it. And he kind of lifts it up and it's kind of bloody. 
And he said, you're preaching about the woman with the issue of blood. And he says, I have this issue of blood. I've had it for seven years. Oh, he man. said, I, I was in a bad drug deal seven years ago, and I got shot with a 38. And the, the slug is still in there, and it's, pre it's in the outer lining of my stomach. And because of it, I'm, I'm constantly nauseated, sick. I live on oatmeal and dry toast. Mm. And uh, <laughs> so that the doctors won't take it out because it's, it's leaning or it's right on an artery and they're afraid I'll, I'll bleed to death. Would you pray for me? Mm. You know, I, I prayed for a lot of things, but I never prayed for a 38 slug. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good. So, uh, so I'm thinking, about, I'm just, it's just going on. It's all happening real quick. And I'm saying, Lord, what do I do? So um, I just laid hands on him. I said, I command this slug to dissolve and to go from this body now in the name of Jesus. Mm. And immediately kind of got a smile on his face and uh, he left and he went to the, the restroom and I prayed for some more people and then he came back and uh, well actually he went back to the refreshment table. He's eating donuts. Ah. So I dismissed everybody. And when I went back there, he was on his third donut Good man. and he said, I can't eat donuts because they make me sick, make me nauseous. This is my third one mm. and I'm not sick yet. And uh, he says, that thing is gone. He says, I could always take my finger and I could, th see, that, that thing never healed. It was always open and always draining. And he could put his index finger in there and he could touch the, the heel of that, that slug. Wow. He says, it's gone. Gone. The next morning I went to his house and he was having bacon and eggs and fried potatoes. Good gracious. Yeah. And uh, he went to the doctor and they confirmed and I have a letter, you know, stating yeah. that that slug oh, that's God, was isn't gone. It? Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. See, I really, I, I kind of missed it. I, I should have just prayed that it would just come out because I could have drilled a hole in it and put it on my key ring and I could have right. always <laughs> had that as a testimony. Hey, but this, it happened. We anyway. got the slug out of it. Well, listen, I, isn't that, that's very powerful, isn't it? And uh, we, uh, the doctor here is going to pray for you a little bit later on. Something <coughs> you may need. Right now we'll go with uh, Mark Dubell family. Oh, precious Jesus.
Yeah, Dr. Billy said that 38 slug disappeared. The power of God. That's what it is. It's the power of God. Amen. And uh, I'm telling you right now, he, he's done so many different things. Like, you know, the guy said he had that blood issue too, seven years, just like the woman that had it for 12 years. But when virtue left out of Jesus, he's, he's asking, who touched me? Now, them disciples were saying, well, good night, Jesus. Everybody's touching you. What, what do you mean? He said, no, somebody touched me. There's a different touch. There's a different cry. Yeah. And we have to be sensitive to the silent cries that are around us. And if we'll be sensitive to that, even though they look good and everything seems to be fine, it's camouflaged. And if you just pay attention to the Spirit of God, He, he will lead you in the right way to be able to minister to folks. It's amazing because we're followers of the Lord Most High. He knows everything. Listen to, the, listen to this verse. He says, uh, And now, Lord, look upon their hearts and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to what? Heal and signs and wonders and perform through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which were, they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy, holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Amen. That's the enduing power of the Holy Spirit. It brings a boldness because that's the Lord inside of you. And boy, when you let that, the Holy Spirit have His way, it can be amazing what can take place. We just need to get out of the way. Oh, we're, we're just, a, we're just a, uh, the seed casters and we're the ones that lift up the name of Jesus. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. We just need to follow His program, follow His ways, and it's amazing what we will see uh, taking place. What a tremendous story that was of, of, uh, of that, that gentleman there. And I know he's, boy, I tell you what, I know he, he left out of there on fire. Amen. And that's, a, <laughs> that's, that's, that's very precious. Now, uh, what your family think about when you know, these things started happening to you and uh, like, you know, maybe your parents or something like that? Uh, well, they just kind of listened. They just uh, kind of paid attention. And, you know, when, when you give a testimony like that and... You know, you've had some other people witness it with you. It's, oh, yeah. it's really hard for people to argue with you. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. It's really, really hard for them to say, well, that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and in fact, that's kind of why I, I, I wrote the book. Okay. But, uh, this is my COVID project. Uh, it, was, it was in April that the Lord spoke to me and just yeah. put this on my heart. Oh, wow. So I wrote, there's 30 chapters here. And uh, there's over 30 miracles and healings, you know, because some mm. have multiple healings. Um, I have one chapter on uh, revival. We had a, a four, over four year revival in our church. Wow. One where the gold dust fell and we had a baby grand piano. We could just go up and we could just wipe the gold off after every service and we'd have gold on our clothes and gold on the chairs and mm -hmm. we cast out devils and healed the sick and four years of that. And we had multiple services and uh, well, we didn't get 60 minutes so we didn't get get uh, well known but in the region we were in Duluth Minnesota and in Minnesota, the region yeah. a lot of people came for that four 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 and a half years yeah so um it was an amazing, amazing time yes yeah, so that, that was revival there you've been in revivals in other places yes yeah uh, foreign and countries foreign countries yes you know like India well we had 50,000 people show up in India Ooh. yeah if you ever, if, if you ever feel that you don't have enough people coming to church go to India and have a have a revival. Oh, good day. Yeah, so 50,000. Oh, my goodness. It was amazing. And just so many people got healed. And uh, uh, Hindus, you know, came to the Lord. Mm. And it was uh, wonderful. You know. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow, 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 wow. So did, you, did your family have any influence on you uh, coming along and really being captivated by Jesus and then moving, what, what into ministry? Uh, just uh, God just called me to uh, to preach the gospel. Uh, I, I um, was a realtor. I had a real estate business. Oh. I was a broker, and I had about a dozen salespeople working okay. for me. Yeah. And um, I just got to the place where I couldn't sell houses anymore. I just wanted to preach, and I was doing street ministry in our city, uh, back in Appleton, uh, Wisconsin. I was out in downtown College Avenue. I'd go in front of the bars and and um, get the drunks, and they came out and give them you know, Bible and minister to them. Is that right? And uh, it, it just got so strong in me yeah. that um, I, I had to go preach and, and God was calling me to 
to follow him. So I went on a seven day fast. I didn't know it would be seven days. I just went on a fast and it, uh, seven days, um, no, no food, just, just water. And the end of the seventh day, uh, the, the Lord spoke to me and said, um, give your real estate company to your partner and take nothing for it and come follow me. Hmm. So I got up and washed my face and combed my hair and went down to the office and one of the salespeople met me at the do door when I came in and said, something, something about you, Bill. Hmm. Uh, you, you don't seem to be that excited about re selling real estate. What is it you really want to do? So I want to serve the Lord and preach the gospel. Well, then that's what you should do. So yeah. Thank you. So I walked in and, and I wrote something out that I gave everything to my, my partner, cleaned up my desk and went home. Well, my wife came home from work that day and I told her what I had done. And well, what kind of surprise was that? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah she, she wasn't excited. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey. you know, things worked out and uh, and it, so you just walked away from the business. Yeah, world. I just walked away from it and never looked back. Never looked back. That's amazing. And got open doors and pioneered some churches and went overseas and held crusades and. Tell me about them churches that you started. How did that? How did that get into you, uh, being so to speak? You know, I'd be driving into a, a little town or something, and I'd see a, one of these old white churches, yeah. and it would just drop in me. Like I got, I got to, I got to pastor a church. It just got really strong in me, mm. and um, somebody called me and asked me to come and start a church at. The, they had a log, a log cabin. Log cabin. In the in the pines, wow. and asked me to come and hold the Sunday morning services there. My daughter um, was young and she played piano. Mm. I played guitar and and people started coming and we got everybody spirit filled and born again and um, and then kind of came to an end uh, they got they got upset with me because uh, uh, I was preaching too hard okay. and uh, so we just moved on and went someplace and started another one and um, people came and just kept doing that yeah just uh, wave the bible and uh, get a room and people would show up and man we'd get a couple hundred people in church man. and after a few years I'd Turn it over and go start another one. Great day in the morning. So I enjoyed that. Yeah. That, so I'm still cool. pastoring. I still have a yeah uh, a church. Well, that's really interesting, right there. Um, I know you mentioned about uh, uh, you know healings and the things that you've seen, <coughs> and uh, I noticed one of the things that uh, was said uh, about uh, you you lost a schoolmate to leukemia. Oh, yes. Yeah. How did that How did that affect you? On yeah. That? Um, <coughs> I suppose uh, that, that's in, in the book. Um, I must have been about 10 or 11 years old and mm. she was a year or two younger and she had leukemia. Mm. And her um, father was the town veterinarian and so everybody knew them and, and uh, there was nothing they could do. And so I remember going to see her as a, as a young boy, you know, she, she was a classmate and, and I remember when she passed away and mm. it was just sad. Yeah. And um, so I, I remember, um, being in Sunday school class about that time, and our Sunday school teacher was actually teaching on um, blind Bartimaeus. And uh, one of the, the girls in the class, uh, name was uh, Jennifer Smith, and uh, she said, well, how come we don't see miracles like and healings like this today? Yeah. And uh, the teacher just kind of, you know, took a, kind of a deep breath and kind of smiled, you know, and I thought, oh, I'm going to learn something today. We're going to find out what's going on. He says, well, we don't need miracles anymore because we have modern science. Now, this is 1960, 61, you know, wasn't all that modern. Mm. And uh, that was his answer. Was his and answer. the little Smith girl said, oh, okay. But I, I said, uh, Lord, if you ever want to show me a miracle, I'll believe it. And I think that um, started something. I have science now. I also remember watching oh. Oral Roberts yeah. on TV um, it was at about 1960, Sunday nights, he was having some tent meetings. And we had the old black and white Motorola TV. And uh, I was the, I was the uh, channel changer, you know. We, we had all three, three channels. And uh, so I'd lay on the floor, you know, and my dad would say, oh, turn on channel two. And anyway, um, so Oral Roberts is, is preaching and um, people are coming out of wheelchairs and they're throwing their crutches and, and it's really amazing. And we went, you know, we went to church, you know, we were a church going family. And I can remember my mom saying, um, gee, I wonder if that's real. And then my dad said, yeah, we never see anything like that in our church. Mm. 
and I'm watching and, and I'm just thinking, oh, I'd like to see something like that. Mm. And uh, I think that kind of got in me. So when I got born again, I just had this thought that I had to go to Africa and I had to pray for the sick. And so I've done both those. Mm. And uh, that uh, just kind of started things. Yeah, there's something in us when we see somebody sick, somebody hurting, depression, everything mm -hmm. that we see, no matter what it looks like or how you name it, <coughs> it affects us that uh, know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we read about all of that, and we're, we're, you know, we're, we're praying, so we're going to pray. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's some real praying going on, and uh, so. I would just love to see it more. Yes. Uh, you know, um, and there's a lot of things I don't have answers to, but that don't stop me from... Right. I don't even understand how people get saved. I don't understand the whole mechanism and all that goes on spiritually, but I know I know it does. Right. I know they get transformed lives because you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see the fruit uh, out of people's lives, and right. you say, wow, this person, man, they changed. Yep. They're not the same. So... Uh, I, I'm just, I just keep reading and keep praying. You know, something I've learned about healing is, <clears throat> I was having this discussion uh, recently with um, um, another um, TV station that I was having an interview on, and the lady mentioned, the host mentioned that in their church, you know, when they pray for somebody, she said, oh, you know, everybody gathers around this person, this pa the pastor's laying hands on them, and 10 other people are laying hands on them, and everybody's praying, and casting this out and praying over that. And she says, you know, just a whole lot of confusion. And most of the time they never get healed. Hmm. And so I got to thinking about that. And, you know, Jesus never did that. Yeah. Jesus never said, hey, boys, come over here. Yeah. Now, he took Peter and John with him, you know, once or twice. But he did the praying. But how did he pray? And I've been teaching on this uh, recently. And about three quarters of the miracles and healings that Jesus did he did it with a word. The word. He spoke a word, arise and walk, hmm. you know. Go show yourselves to the priests. And mm -hmm. as they went, they were healed. Come out Testify in the name of Jesus. It. Yeah, he only laid hands on a couple of people. He only touched a couple of people. He um, spit on one man's tongue that yeah. was mute. Yeah. Put, um, uh, yeah. made, made, made paste, you know, and put on another man's eyes. Um, but most of the time he just took authority. So yeah. as Christians... Yeah. We've been given the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, when he sent out the 70, he told them to go out and yeah. heal the sick. and um, Cast out the devils. Yep. And so they came back and they were rejoicing. Luke chapter 10. Yeah. They came back and they were rejoicing. And, you know, they're just like us. Yeah. You know, when you have a success in, on the mission field yeah. or in a, in a church service, aren't you excited and happy? Yeah. Well, you get, you get 70 guys together yeah. that have seen uh, devils come out and people be healed. Man, they're, they're giving high fives and they're, they're hooting and hollering. Man, did we have ourselves a time. And what did Jesus say? Mm -hmm. Behold, I, you know, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. He goes on and he says, do not rejoice because of this, yeah. but rejoice because your names are written down in, in heaven. Yeah. So read that backwards. Because your names are written down in heaven, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. So we have to get the cart, no, the horse before the cart. Yeah. Got to be born again, get spirit filled. That authority is given to us. It's our authority from, 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 from Christ to heal yeah. the sick, cast all devils, raise the dead. What do you say? Yep. And you don't have to get all excited and holler and scream. In fact, no, yeah. if you, you read the book, the examples I give, the testimonies that, that, I, that I have of people healing, there's a couple raising the dead in here. Um, all I said was I maybe laid hands and I said, be healed in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Arise and live in the name of Jesus. And that was it. And I had everybody laying hands with me, a bunch of confusion. Just take authority. Take authority. Yeah. Amen. You hear that? Take authority. So, again, we're going we're gonna to pray in a minute. And Dr. Billy's going to take authority. <coughs> and I want you to be ready to just reach out and receive. Right now, we'll go with uh, Mark Dubell family. I call him Lord. Master, reach. 
Redeemer, Savior of the world, wonderful Counselor, bright morning star, lily of the valley, provider and friend, he was yesterday, he'll be tomorrow, the beginning. Welcome back. I tell you, uh, Dr. Billy is very interesting here. You have to really, really uh, focus, focus in so we can hear. We can always get these nuggets that can help us and strengthen us, you know, no matter where we are in our walk with God. Um, the, um, I think one of the statements was, uh, that, that I've heard was, sometimes revivals get messy. <laughs> uh, they do. Mm -hmm. I've been around some before, yep. and it is amazing what took place, and police cars out and all kind of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, they do get messy sometimes. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. you're dealing with people. Deep. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's not in the same place. They're not. You know, uh, there's, sometimes there's somebody that wants to take it over and have the revival, you know, for themselves. And, um, you know, that's kind of what happened with uh, the Azusa Street revival. Mm, okay. Conflict, okay. you know, between uh, William Seymour and a couple other people. And uh, he locked up the the church or the it was actually a, a stable and he yeah. locked it up he got mad he locked the doors and so um those people then went down the street and, and the revival continued on with them but 
it was kind of over for him. Boy. So um, uh, pride, pride will come in. Oh, yeah. Jealousy oh, gosh. will come oh. in. You know oh. how much God loves pride and jealousy? Oh. <laughs> and, I mean, the Holy Spirit will just, uh, just depart if uh, yeah, the I'm, wrong attitudes and the leadership. I remember Evan Roberts reading about his revivals and all. Said he 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 uh, put a sack over his head. Mm -hmm. Said he refused for them to be coming and looking for him. He was there to yeah. introduce them to the Lord God and right. uh, read some interesting stuff on him. Right. And uh, but he was always bending himself and humbling himself before the great God. No wonder there's such a great revival there in Wales yes. uh, when it took place. So you're exactly right. I mean that can take. That is something that you really have to guard when when the numbers start escalating. And mm -hmm. the numbers of the people coming, and you know, boy, you know, uh, the reason they're coming is because the Spirit of God's there, Amen. not because you're there. You can't God start use thinking, anybody. Yeah, it's nothing about you. Yeah, it ain't got nothing to just do. Just a vessel. That's right. God could use just, the next guy, he, he can, next woman. You know. he can definitely do it. So you're right. It it can get uh, it can get messy, and I've I'm, uh, I've seen that thing take place. And even where police cars had to come out, that was that was pretty sure, pretty strange. Yeah, yeah, I could attest you know, to that too. But I'll say one thing: the preacher took the bull by the horns, mm -hmm. and uh, he continued to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the folks in there that were kind of against some of the things that were going on, they just, you know, he said, "You'll either you'll either be a part of it, or you you need to step out." Yeah, because God's on the move. And uh, that that revival turned down a little over fifteen hundred people coming to know the Lord. Okay. And uh, and and it what it did it exploded out into the little old city it was in. The the you, you the young people just mm -hmm. got on fire. Yeah. And there were about six churches, uh, just six uh, schools. Okay. That just man they got so many saved, and uh, they they hit McDonald's and Burger King and all these plate chicken places, and uh, I mean they were telling everybody you couldn't you couldn't go in that town without young people mm -hmm. telling you about Jesus, and that's revival. Yep. When when they catch the fire. Yep. Uh, that uh, that the wind of the the spirit of God is blowing. The uh, kind of a kind of an overview may may say of uh, uh, miracles and things that that, that you've seen. Uh, you know that, that you've witnessed. You know you, you may have a runoff right now. I've seen. I, I saw the bullet. And I, I saw that disintegrate. I, I, I've watched the Lord do this and this. And if you can name off a couple of those, to, there may be somebody watching tonight that says, "That's me. Mm -hmm. I need. I need that right there." What he just said. Okay. You want me to share another? Yeah. Um, yeah. We were in um, uh, Kampala, Uganda, a few years back, mm -hmm. having a crusade over there. My wife was with me and another friend and um, a pastor. He'd actually been to our Bible school in uh, Wisconsin mm -hmm. and then he'd gone back and invited us to come over. And we're um, going to the, the last crusade. I think we had about five nights in a row and we're coming around a corner and there's um, a, a body of a woman laying in the street in a pool of blood. Her oh head was goodness. in a pool of blood. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, uh, pray for her and I'll raise her up. So I said to the driver, his name was Sam, I said, Sam, pull the car over. I'm going to go pray for that woman. And Sam said, oh, that happens all the time. People get killed here all the time. And it's, really? you know, it's yeah, it's just yeah. common. And I said, no, stop the car. I'm going to go pray for her. And the pastor in the back seat said, stop the car, Sam. So he did. I jumped out. I went over and uh, I, I checked and there was no pulse. I mean, and, and, you know, I took my left hand for some reason. I put it behind her head and kind of lifted her head up. And it was like a broken egg. I mean, mm. it was just mush in my hand and blood all over. And she was dead. And um, so I said, um, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and live. Mm. You know, that's just how I prayed. And, uh, and her body jerked. Mm. And all the people were standing around. They, they ran. Because <laughs> right. they knew she was dead. And uh, <coughs> somebody had actually gone and um, um, called a, an ambulance. And so she sits up and she takes her hand and puts it back there. And you can see she's got a headache, but she's alive. Yeah. And uh, the ambulance pulls up. And I said, well, I, I got a crusade to do. So I um, grabbed a bottle of water and washed my hand off and went to the crusade and had a great night. Well, we flew out the next morning. And the pastor, whose name is uh, Moses Kagundu, he went to the hospital the next day and he found this woman. Wow. And she told him that she had been dead and, and uh, she had gone to hell and she uh, was not saved. 
And so he led her to the Lord then. Wow. And uh, she recovered and, uh, and lived. Wow, wow, so, wow. I like telling you that one. Oh, man, Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, good gracious. Um, maybe let's, uh, let's, let's let you pray uh, as the Lord leads you for people that may be watching right now that got different things or just as the Spirit leads you sure. to believe sure. for a miracle. Sure. Uh, I had a word of knowledge uh, that, that someone has a, a growth in their in their throat, and I believe it's on the left side, mm. and uh, another um, um, a heart condition, and of course that can be a lot of people. But uh, if you have something like that, uh, just just lay your hand upon that on your heart, or if you have anything else in your body, anything that's not right, anything where you have pain, maybe you've had a bad report from the doctor, just. The hands there right now, mm. and uh, we're just going to ask Jesus right now. Yeah. Uh, and I just want you to put your faith in Jesus, not yes. a hope, but just a just a an assurance that Jesus is my healer. Thank you, Lord. And so, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, that that you've done so much for us. Lord, we we believe what your word says that by your stripes we were healed. That mm. you, you you took upon your own body our sins. That we, having died to sin shall live for righteousness by whose stripes yes, we were healed. That means yeah. that healing was purchased for us over 2,000 years ago at Calvary. The same time our sins were forgiven, um, our salvation was provided for us, healing was provided for us also. There's nothing more that Jesus has to do. He's done it all. And now we have to receive it. So for those of you that have sickness and pain in yes, your body right now, yes. I declare you healed in Jesus Christ's name right now. Receive your healing. And we thank you for it, Jesus. Thank we you thank you for it. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, yeah, if, if that's you, shout, shout the victory. <coughs> shout the glory. And uh, maybe some of you are saying, you know, uh, I think I need to get my heart right with Jesus tonight. That's what I need to do, too. Well, that'd be great because God so loved the world yeah. that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And God sent not his son in this world to condemn this world but that the world might be saved through him. Jesus, uh, it tells us in the scripture, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. That's why he came. Mm -hmm. He didn't come for the, for the righteous. He came for the sick, the sinners, to, to take to them that word repentance and to repent, to turn away uh, from the drugs, re turn away from the porno, turn away from the sin and the, and the lifestyle that is of the enemy and, and, and make an, an about turn and cast your eyes on the one who is able to raise the dead. Cast your eyes on the one that's able to break the shackles and chains that are upon you in alcoholism and drugs and that sort of thing. You that are in prison, he can make a way for you to absolutely get out. I'm telling you, no matter what you're facing, if you go before him, he is the God who's able. No walls can keep him back. Nothing can. He penetrates the darkest of the darkest of people to give them hope and to bring them out wherever they are. So if you're willing, if, if you will believe that, if you can open your mouth and say, just like the woman who was healed of the 12 years of blood issue, who touched me, who touched me, who touched me? He was waiting on a testimony. And finally, she testified what had happened. Whoo! Good and not alive. Yeah. That's what you need to do now. Open your mouth and testify, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins as I repent of my sins. And I want to have a personal intimate, deep relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I ask that you would write my name in the eternal book of life so that when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'm just telling you, if you prayed that, call grandma, call somebody, call a friend, spread the word. Hey, I met Jesus tonight and he's changed my life, I'm telling you. So God bless you. We love you and praise you. We'll be right back, okay? Stay with us.